What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Hi. I'm about to go feed the cows. Um, Cotton seed. We've got about 55 mama cows. And yes, I don't know if a ton of people. So a lot of people around this area do feed their cattle cotton seed, uh, especially very high fat protein. Uh, the place is the best right now. Uh, the uh, gin's going full blast. I think they'll be done in three or four days. Uh, we've been going around, it's like 33 right now. In the middle of the day, it's like two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, for the high, it's gonna get down to like 20 tonight, so we've been scrambling around making sure double checking on all um, our antifreeze situations and all our equipment, trucks, stuff like that. So I hadn't really had a free hand all day, but we're completely finished with harvest. This is right here. I thought it was going to be a big gate, but this is our catch pan. We, uh, I say we, my dad's been feeding them the last couple days. Here we go. That was not the most convenient thing. Anyway. My dad's been feeding them in here the last couple days, going to anticipating on catching a few. There's some that's between 800 and 1,000 pounds, which that's normally not our plan to keep them that long, but we've been busy with harvest and cattle prices have just been down, so we had not been that eager to sell. Um, before I'll get up here, I'm gonna walk you through this our calf feeder and kind of show you. I'm gonna open the gates up so everything can get in. We let that run out because just, like I said, been busy harvesting. Um, we close all the gates, keep that calf fitter full through, say like summer and fall, and put this gate right here, which we think will let anything from about 350-ish, 400, anyway, a certain size that needs to put on weight can come straight out of the pasture, which is in that direction behind me. So, they can come in, feed in the catch pen, which in turn makes them easier to work, vaccinate, all that. They feed, which will be like a grain, soybean, uh, pellet mix. Um, and then here, when, we're, when we are trying to catch them, we'll put like a bale of hay, round bale of hay, scatter it out in the trough, some on the thicker spots of grass. That's an old nasty bell of hay. May put some in some of the feed tubs, things like that. He even put some in there. But I'm gonna open all the gates up, get uh, go down in the pasture where the cows are at and try to lure them up this away. So maybe, say, you know, Saturday or something when the local sale is to sell barn or we may catch a few and get somebody one of the cattle dealers to come pick them up so hang tight we're gonna get these gates open mm, that was stuck shifted a little bit Whee! <laughs> good night Too old for this. All right. Let y'all have a little look. We try to round off, as you can tell, that's when that corner's at about a 45 right there when those gates are closed. That one goes down, it's got an angle. There's no sharp corners because when we are working the cows, this funnels down. I would say it's about 120 feet on this end by the pasture. Um, right here in the center, 
it angles in, sort of funnels them in. It's probably about 65 to 70 feet here. I walk on up towards the uh, the chute and the smaller separating pins, and right here it's probably 35 to 40 from each side. And we can also create by this panel with those two panels, we can close them in and do. Whew, fingers are cold. We can do a. Uh, smaller catch pin right here which will open up back out into the lane which is leads back in the pasture which we can also cut off so if you can see you can see right there we can take those three and open an orange gate right there and close off this much of the lane for a basically an emergency if something gets out, we have one more pin to let them into, or to stop them from going back free. So 120 up to about 65, 70. Um, here it's about 35, 40. Squeeze them down, they're in this direction. And then we'll, what we'll do is just open this gate, which has grown up now. Like I said, we haven't worked the cattle since middle of the summer. Uh, leave them this this gate swings open into this one if you can tell that with the hinges it'll just come straight across here um, well for sure keep that one closed that's not even the pasture out there where I just came from and yeah I can walk in here and show you some more of that That, this gate will swing both ways, whichever way we need it to. And this is usually the one that we stand by to work the cattle. This is, we just kick that in and it'll stop it. Most of the time we'll stop it from right here because we can just, what we do if we want to take some from this pin into the round pin, we kick that in like I just done take this gate, meet it with that gate, which is, it also meets this gate, which will create another pin, a separate pin here. But if we want to take what's in this pin and put it in here, all we have to do is open this and that at the same time, they meet and run, just transfer uh, cattle from pin to pin. So I'm in the working pin now. It's all planks. Sorry, you can see my glove. It's all planks and what we do is try to keep it as round as possible. Run them that direction around this wall and separate them, separate them right here if we can, if they separate themselves, which you can run them here. Let's get a swing if you move the grass and probably have to jack it up on a hinge a little bit. Just a little maintenance problem. Anyway, it'll swing shut. You can run them out there or you can run them into the chute. This gate, which is probably not going to swing real great right now. It might. All these pine needles have to be moved once. But once you get the groove worn out, it should go. As you can see, it follows the edge of the fence and will open all the way up. I have to show you sometimes with cows in the pen. But come around here, let this go. And as the cows come in, instead of chasing them, you just follow that behind them. It'll fall all the way up. They go into here. You can stop them there with this wooden gate, which is basically homemade latch, pull out, drop it back when they go. Another separator, this right here, off of there, it'll go all the way over and make the funnel, make the uh, the sheep go this way into the head gate, where we catch them 
to do like the vaccinating and the cash trading you know bulls to steers kind of deal so another little holding pin over here after the head gate or you can open this gate and go right on to from head gate to loading the trailer those are the two two trailer chutes that we hold or you can if you're not going to the head gate you can't do anything just loading them up that's what this was over here for hook that open that it goes all the way to the trailer there and let me go catch some cattle or round them up and feed them anyway going to off the horn here they come close and turn around and book it back up there there's two of the bulls you got a big horned Hereford and a big Charlotte Just right here by the gym. Oh yeah, here they come. My windshield is dirty. Whole gang on their way. I get in here. Spot of hay right there. could be a Ooh, like a little cast bike a little steer yes sir yeah I'll be honest I haven't seen them since we started to foliate and cotton and what's that August they've got plenty of grass then and they fly spray them and stuff middle of the summer early midsummer and uh 
they're kind of on their own. My dad kind of rides through and checks them sometimes, but another at Horn Hereford. That one's, who knows. on any certain breed we got mostly black cows but just because we really like how they how good mamas they are but uh, we've got Charlet bull they normally throw a pretty good uh, pretty good size calf it grows fast and that Hereford it's not really sure of the traits that it carries uh, I'd kind of be wrong if I told you I should be making it up I think the Herefords mixed with the black mama cows tend to be help on calfy knees now somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong but uh A real hardy type of calf. So, yeah, we got some of both. We don't know what we're, uh, most of the time you can tell who the daddy is, but sometimes you don't know. And we're, that's nasty. But, we got happy, healthy cows that are, uh, always fat and well fed. Helps having a cotton gin, uh, few hundred feet away that way if they do get out you usually don't have to uh, chase them too far because they've got a grain bin right there that always have a, has a little corn and beans close and then a cotton seed house right there it's always got a few few piles so and uh you most of the time that whole hillside right there grows up with some really late winter ryegrass We normally don't have to chase them far, but I'm gonna let them get out, let them find that other pile up here at the front and let them get calmed down. <laughs> 